السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی یو ٹو دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان وی آر گیٹنگ ان ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی تھری آف ورک دا برانڈ مینجمنٹ اینڈ دا ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن از برانڈ ایکسٹینشن وی لیفٹ آور ڈسکشن آن دا سبجیکٹ ان دا پریویس لیکچر بائی کمپلیٹنگ آور انڈرسٹینڈنگ آن دا کانسیپٹ آف لائن ایکسٹینشن and to the knowing that to the line extension and the brand extension are two very well differentiated concepts that let us now start talking about what the brand extension is. Uh, brand extension, uh, like you will recall, is uh, the study and uh, the practice of brands which go across the boundaries where they already exist into markets which are new. New in the sense that uh, they are out to satisfy a different need altogether And uh, the example could be a company into uh, the shipbuilding, for example, also getting into the car manufacturing. Uh, this is uh, a company you know, which uh, I talked about in the previous lecture, or maybe a lecture before that. Uh, you know, you have companies uh, which you are uh, very well aware of and uh, which also form uh, part of the marketing literature that uh, are into things like uh, electrical appliances and uh, the electrical appliances for uh, your kitchen, uh, electrical appliances for your uh, the family rooms uh, like televisions uh, and then they are also into lighting systems for your uh, homes, they are into lighting for your streets and uh, then there are companies uh, that are into the area of um, the personal care products, uh, cosmetics and so on and so forth. And they're also, at the same time, are into uh, detergents, for example. And uh, from there, they also get into food items. So this is uh, an example of uh, the brand extension. And I hasten to add, it is uh, the concept of the brand extension is not only confined to the multinationals, meaning MNCs, as you call in the business literature, Uh, the concept is uh, the being uh, undertaken and applied very successfully also in our market. There are companies, for example, um, that are into you know, automotive uh, parts and they're also getting into food items only because uh, that the brand is very strong. Examples could be so many. Now the question is, Uh, having had an understanding of uh, what brand extension is and how it differs from the other concept of uh, line extension, why do we extend brands? What really are uh, the motivating factors or the reasons behind that? Uh, one is that uh, the brands could have to stay uh, up to date and modern. In order to satisfy needs of uh, the customers, what brands do, they try to surpass uh, themselves. But what that means is they create their newer and higher benchmarks, not only in terms of quality, but also in terms of satisfying different kinds of needs. An example could be a bicycle manufacturer getting into motorbikes. Uh, that is something you know, which is uh, taking place right now in our market. Another example could be A manufacturer who is into spices, getting into the jams and the chutneys and so on and so forth. Brands, therefore, have to do something in markets which are different from where they are already in order to prove to the customers that they are responsive. They are responsive to the needs and they are responsive to the practices of the customers in the marketplace. And uh, you will recall, they do that out of the energy that, that they muster uh, during uh, the total of the marketing process. If they are successful and valuable, they muster so much strength and so much value that they really like to and they want to pay back to the marketplace, meaning their uh, customers, uh, by way of uh, the satisfying their uh, newer needs and expectations. There are certain needs and uh, expectations uh, which you uh, find out through the research process uh, which uh, consumers think uh, that are not being met. That happens in terms of uh, consumer consumables and that also happens in terms of consumer durables. But there are uh, the certain needs and, um, well, certain needs 
uh, that uh, are um, capitalized by the brands, meaning uh, customers either could have that thing sitting very dormant at the back of their mind, or they are not, you know, really aware of that particular need. And that is the beauty of for the proactive uh, marketing. Um, those are the kind of needs. I mean, the fulfillment of those kinds of needs are the ones which really uh, touch that emotional card with the customers. By introducing something that you prove to your customers or your prospects that here is a need of which you may not be aware of and uh, we have uh, uh, tried to you know, capitalize on that need so that it, it could be fulfilled to your benefit, to your satisfaction, to your pleasure. Uh, example could be cars. There are uh, many innovations that are taking place, so not because uh, the customers really think of uh, those needs uh, all the time. It is because um, the brands um, basically uh, communicate uh, those um, uh, added up benefits to the customers and then uh, present themselves uh, for their fulfillment. Uh, the, another example could be electronics, like uh, the kind of innovations and the kind of um, improvements and kind of improved benefits with which uh, you enjoy so much are not the ones which you thought of, but uh, the manufacturers uh, thought of those. And uh, they thought of those because uh, they really wanted to satisfy that particular need at the same time staying ahead of the competition or staying uh, in pace um, with the, the marketplace because of the competitive pressures. So brands, you know, that really rely on communication alone in order to you know, maintain their image or further improve their image uh, by having just a single product uh, usually have not been as successful as those brands with which get into different other categories. This is sort of what has been proved by time and uh, there's a lot of evidence rela relating uh, this fact. So to stay modern and responsive in present day's world, the brands have to stay in tune with developments that are taking place uh, in the market. As uh, the habits change, uh, and uh, like I said earlier, as expectations change, the brands have to uh, make use of the energy which they create in the marketplace by being so interactive. And they are interactive because they're communicating with uh, their loyal customers and also prospects all the time. They're being consumed, meaning the customer patronage is being uh, uh, provided to the brands day in, day out. And uh, because of that patronage, the brands uh, they gain more and more energy. And it is because of that energy that they like to pay back. And the payback, um, in terms of, again, uh, not only consumer durables, in, in, in terms of uh, consumer consumables, by meeting those expectations which uh, they really have developed. Now, a company that is into spices, uh, for example, uh, if that company decides to get into uh, selling iodized salt, it is an example of uh, the brand extension because uh, the company needs uh, something very different in order to be prepared and in order to uh, stand on that platform to start making and then selling that. So, uh, in other words, it is uh, the brands, you know, which uh, many a time uh, create uh, situations in which they make uh, you realize that uh, here's a need uh, which, if satisfied, is going to be up to the mark and up to your expectations. Uh, look at uh, the situation when uh, there was no uh, packaged yogurt uh, in the market. Uh, the yogurt was sold as a generic uh, product and there was no branding. And um, ever since the introduction of yogurt into the packaging, uh, we have come a long way in terms of uh, the different uh, positionings and in terms of um, a different um, uh, the points of differentiation. But getting back to the main point of, of the brand extension, um, expectations are something which are to be met and it is not important that that packaged yogurt is 
uh, offered to the market could buy a company which is already into something very, very close to it. Um, a yogurt uh, that was uh, introduced, uh, I mean, packaged yogurt, uh, when it was introduced to the back uh, in the 80s probably, or maybe 70s, uh, that was not introduced by a company which was into foods at all. I mean, that's, that's a historical fact. This company was into another operation which was um, way off um, the, the yogurt market. So brands uh, that like to pay back to the market you know, through the energy they have, uh, create, they have generated for themselves by being successful in one particular category and then they go into other categories and start fulfilling uh, customers' needs. And in the process, if they become successful, um, they all start to go on a very positive note. So if they become successful, uh, they become more valuable, they become more powerful, and um, they add value not only to the company, but they offer value also to customers. So in other words, when brands get into with other categories, they also uh, insulate the company from different kinds of threats in the market. And those threats could be uh, having uh, more um, dangerous proportions if uh, the company is just a one product and one brand company. So when you are into other categories, you are insulated from those threats to quite an extent because if something goes wrong with one uh, category or one product, you can compensate uh, that situation by the help of the strength and by the help of the power that your brand has into another category. So the resourceful companies um, do follow this practice of uh, getting into a brand extension. Second uh, reason, apart from um, trying to be uh, up to date and uh, modern and getting into so many different categories to uh, satisfy needs and all that, second reason is that uh, the chances of success are higher uh, if you extend your brand, meaning just like a line extension, whether you use the same name, you, if you use the same brand name which has been very powerful and successful in one category, you like to uh, transcend uh, into another category with the same name because the chances of your getting success there are on a higher side. And uh, we can see this with the help of um, this uh, the illustration uh, which uh, shows um, uh, five different years this again uh, is a result of uh, a market study carried out uh, in one of the Western markets. And we all have reasons to believe that these kind of um, happenings they do have applicability. I mean a parallel applicability into our market and markets like ours as well. When brands as brand extensions and brands as new brands start off, they start off with um, the possibility of 100% success. You never start off with uh, a lower possibility um, thinking to yourself uh, that maybe the brand is not going to be successful and maybe it is going to be successful. Well, if you have negative uh, thinking, you are starting on the wrong foot and that must not be the case. So this illustration shows you the two different types of the brands, meaning brand extensions with those uh, dark blue uh, dots, the upper line, uh, and um, that line with uh, light blue with the dots, uh, the lower line, uh, are two lines that represent uh, the brand extensions by way of the dark one, and uh, the new brands by way of uh, the lighter ones, I mean light blue. Both start off or started off in the year one with um, the assumption that uh, the success factor is going to be 100%. But then look what happened after uh, five years or what happened through a five-year cycle. Let's take a look at uh, the brand extensions first. The line goes down uh, because not all the brands uh, are successful. Uh, there's some just you know fizzle out. Uh, and some uh, stay in the market, they, they survive the rigors uh, of uh, the, the marketing dynamics. 
on the market dynamics rather. And of the five-year brand extensions, because you can see that uh, the brands that survived uh, were 50% of those that were introduced or those that started on a very positive note of being successful or hoping to be successful by 100%. Conversely, if they take a look at uh, the other line, which is like an elbow, and uh, that line through the years, I mean, it is very interesting that if you take a look at uh, year two, uh, there's, there's, there's a dip, and quite a tremendous dip. Um, from 100% in the very second year, uh, the standalone or the new brands, they go down to 50%, meaning 50% are already out of the race and the remaining, they show a gradual process of uh, uh, failing and getting out of the market, and by the time they hit the year five, uh, they are um, out of the market by a factor of 70%, meaning the brands, new brands that survived were just about 30%. So this is a very convincing uh, research uh, the finding that um, of the brands which uh, are introduced as brand extensions um, in about a period of five years of their introduction 50% of the brands uh, survive whereas in case of um, the new brands um, just about uh, the 30% of uh, the brands introduced uh, survive within five years of their introduction. Going by these two figures, I think you know, every manager would like to would hesitate to get into uh, newer brand names and rather would like to stick to the existing brand names. And also knowing that uh, the existing brands uh, do make uh, a lot of home into the hearts of uh, the customers because of the familiarity, because of the loyalty the customers already have toward brands, um, the companionship, you know, with the brands that uh, you have been having for such a long time. So the brands uh, having the customer's patronage along with the patronage of retailers, which we talked about in great detail, uh, whether that be a line extension or that be a brand extension, these two uh, factors of patronage, they're really uh, motivate the brand managers and marketing people to go for existing brands, meaning to go for brand extensions, because they know that uh, the rate of trial is going to be higher in case of uh, existing brands. The rate of conversion after you know, customers or prospects to have tried your brand is going to be higher than uh, new brands. Uh, new brands are non-entities uh, to begin with. Uh, in the process, they, they might uh, they become big hits, but uh, the fact remains, uh, in the beginning, they are uh, non-entities. The third factor uh, which really uh, motivates uh, the brand managers to go for um, the brand extensions is that uh, the rate of um, uh, conversion is also higher in uh, relation to the brand extensions. I pointed out this thing earlier that uh, the trial is uh, one of the most important mechanics in the whole process of uh, a brand with the gaining registration into the minds of uh, the prospects, even if it happens to be a new brand, and right down to the, the final uh, action of uh, the purchase, which takes place in the market. If there is no trial, uh, you rest assured that there is going to be no sale because uh, without going for a trial, nobody is going to convert to the brand which you are hoping to sell. Not only hoping to sell, hoping to sell in big numbers. So, uh, knowing these um, uh, factors of uh, a higher probability of uh, the trial, uh, conversion, and loyalty, uh, managers could do feel actuated to go for. Uh, brand extensions. Uh, this uh, again can be substantiated, uh, these three factors which I talked about in terms of how the you people with having motivation to go for the brand extensions can be illustrated by the help of uh, this uh, graphics which uh, explains the, the concept very well. 
the rate of trial in terms of uh, the brand extensions is uh, the 123 against an index of 100, meaning 100 for uh, existing, uh, I mean, uh, for new brands and the 123 for extensions, the meaning existing brands. Naturally, uh, the people know who you are. The rate of trial uh, is like uh, 17% uh, as compared with 13, the 13 in case of uh, new standalone brands. And uh, if um, the factor of loyalty is uh, 100 in case of new brands, I mean standalone brands, it is 161 uh, in relation to brand extensions. So knowing this uh, kind of findings, it becomes very natural for all the marketing people, rather all business managers to extend their brands and not be adventurous uh, in terms of uh, the new the brand names because uh, you have to go through um, all the variables uh, of the marketing mix uh, all over again. And uh, you know the variables of marketing mix starting with the product and product, uh, you know where it is made. That's all production operations. And for that, you know, you have to go back even to the purchasing and inventories and logistics and so on and so forth. So whenever you talk about uh, the variables of uh, the marketing mix, it is not something uh, you know that happens only in the area of marketing. It is something which is very all-encompassing, and uh, it takes into its fold all the uh, factors and all the functions of the management process: production, finance, the purchasing, inventories, uh, the marketing itself, information technology, the human resource, and you know why I'm talking about all those because the implications. Um, of uh, moving from one strategy to another or having to move or having to shift, you know, from one um, pedestal okay, to another uh, means different strategic moves and okay, that can cause uh, frustrations and okay, lost situations. So it is the very obvious the why the brand why the marketing people like to go for the brand extensions another factor which really um, plays the very favorable role the while you consider the brand extension versus um, introducing new brands is the cost of advertising you will recall the uh, discussion on concept of uh, the mono product versus uh, diversified products while uh, we uh, relate those to uh, the factor of costing, a mono product uh, costs uh, less and diversified products uh, cost high, and uh, which means that scale economies that we uh, have the uh, opportunity to achieve uh, while dealing with uh, the mono product are in one category. In one category, is not uh, there if we are having so many different brands or a family of brands into so many different categories. Uh, with the result, if we have um, different brands uh, and a complete you know, family of brands with, with different characters, with different value frameworks and with different names, you know, you can well imagine the kind of uh, uh, increased and incremental costs relating, uh, relating all the areas. Again, you see the marketing mix relating all those categories, um, it, it, the cost really goes sky high. And uh, also uh, knowing that um, the, the modern practice of uh, the brand management mm, is um, basically driven by uh, the factor of uh, the competition in the marketplace. Uh, the name of the game for the companies is not to go for very high cost. The name of the company, uh, the name of the business in present days for the management is to control your costs. And not only control your costs, but also the offering in a good quality, rather very high quality at controlled costs. Those of you who already have done operations management or a similar course that would know what total quality management is all about. It's not only that you offer your customers with very high quality. Internally, you've got to control costs. And if you being company A, uh, the produce uh, the one level of quality which is say very high uh, at a certain cost which is uh, X and another company which uh, produces 
a similar kind of a product with the same level of quality uh, with uh, uh, cost, with a cost factor which is X minus one, uh, meaning having a lower cost, then that happens to be a better company uh, in terms of uh, quality management than yours because uh, they're offering uh, with a similar uh, quality level uh, with a cost factor which is lower, meaning they are making more contribution, with meaning their brand is offering the company a higher value than yours. The, the consumer factor is uh, one factor and uh, the consumers or the customers of both the brands are going to be, you know, in their own rights and in their own perceptions are going to be equally satisfied, but um, internally uh, it takes on an added significance and a dimension uh, to be very sensitive to the costing factor and you have to control costs. Now, one of the areas in which you really have an opportunity of uh, with the controlling uh, costs is um, advertising and uh, uh, promotions also. So advertising uh, in particular, um, more so in advertising and less so in promotions. And then I will explain that why. Because uh, if you have uh, the one brand uh, all across uh, the, the categories, you do not really have to uh, make so much noise about the brand name uh, in terms of uh, having one brand name uh, in relation to a family of brands. Um, it is very obvious that if you have uh, different brand names, you have to go for uh, advertising and communication campaigns tailored for each different brand. Not only each different brand, but each different sub-family within the overall family. Why I say sub-family? Because the one brand name, if you have, you know, apart from X, if you have Y and Z, under those the Y and Z, the, you would like to go for line extensions, meaning line stretches. And uh, the, the, the brand name the, which is different for the overall category is going to have implications uh, not only the, for uh, that particular brand, but for the whole company in terms of for the costing and all that. I am quite confident, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident you are uh, clear about uh, this concept now. So advertising is one area which offers a great opportunity to companies to control costs and be competitive in the present days of the business, modern business management. And therefore, you are inclined to go for brand extensions and not for new brands. And again, this is not to say that you never should go for new brands. But we shall talk about the significance of uh, uh, new brands also with the butt at a later stage. And uh, the advertising factor, you know, to, to rub in the conclusion is uh, the factor of the which uh, offers you uh, cost efficiencies. To, to summarize this, cost efficiencies and uh, yet mileage in terms of uh, uh, in terms of promotions and uh, in terms of uh, the image capital. I mean, that is, uh, that is something uh, really important. Um, the image uh, capital. What is image capital and uh, how, you know, you, how that comes into play? We're going to talk about that as well. But uh, let us uh, talk about another factor before that which really actuates the managers to uh, go for um, brand extensions. Just like in the case of uh, line extensions, you know, line extensions could help um, sustain a, a sick brand, uh, the brand extension helps you uh, fighting uh, a sick uh, the brand or a sick category. Uh, how uh, that helps or why that happens that uh, the brand, exten brand extension um, plays uh, that, that kind of a role to enable you to stay afloat and not only stay afloat but uh, the comfortably uh, you know on, on the surface uh, is because at times the competition is very stiff and your brand which happens to be a very good brand a valuable brand but it has to do things uh, by falling into the footsteps of, of your competitors. And one of the situations could be 
uh, of which uh, I gave you an example um, in the form of marketing people arguing that it is not that uh, we choose the, these situations, it is because we are driven into the situations of cannibalization, into the situation of uh, the price cuts, into the situations of uh, perpetual discounts, or for that matter, everyday low price items, and therefore compromising um, your financial contributions. So one of the why factors, the why um, this uh, and how factor, how, why and how a brand extension that helps you uh, fight uh, an ailing uh, the brand in the base category uh, or a base product that you have been dealing um, with, you know, for the last few decades, not only years, because it helps you uh, attain a comfortable position into other areas. So, coming back to the why and how, why it is because of the stiff competition, it is because of the sh shrinking category as a whole. At times, uh, it happens that the category you are a part of, it is uh, shrinking. Uh, a time may come when uh, the safety matches uh, may go uh, out of, uh, of fashion uh, 100%. I'm not sure whether that, whether that time will come or not, but uh, thinking about it uh, hypothetically, uh, what is going to be the implication then? If um, the manufacturers within that category um, are sensitive and sense that kind of uh, an eventuality, they would obviously uh, have an option to move into those areas which are going to replace uh, that technology, uh, which is going to areas which are going to uh, replace um, that kind of uh, usage mode, and that uh, usage mode is going to be um, addressed by a newer technology, meaning a newer product, and the different kind of positioning, and hence different um, kinds of um, variables of the marketing mix. But getting back to the why factor, this is the one of the reasons that you are driven um, into the uh, area of uh, the brand extension. Do you feel very comfortable that, uh, that we should be moving into another category because this category is now shrinking? Another uh, reason uh, that could be you may feel yourself uh, in a situation in which you really have to catch up with new technologies. The category they may not be shrinking, but uh, new technologies could may make it uh, uh, imperative and make it incumbent upon you to go for um, newer uh, categories. And when I, when I say new categories, because naturally when you are um, bringing in a newer technology uh, that may define the boundaries which are different. And uh, this is another factor which we are going to talk about uh, in, in a short while. But this remains the third very important and significant factor uh, that actuate managers in favor of brand extension. And I would summarize those once again. Stiff competition, shrinking category, and catching up with um, the need uh, to catch up with new or newer technologies. So the best course of action for managers is to develop something uh, the new on the basis of uh, the brand awareness, on the basis of brand equity that the brand uh, already enjoys in the marketplace and not uh, by being adventurous. Uh, and once again, uh, I would give you uh, an example of um, the area of um, matches. I talked about a hypothetical situation uh, relating matches um, getting extinct, uh, which they may not. Other situation could be um, they will never get extinct, but at the same time, they are letting uh, newer technologies to make inroads into that category. And the category, I mean the overall category is known as the category of lights. You may not call it the category of matches, you may call it the category of lights. Because you have to define your market um, by parameters which are not narrow enough to uh, keep you, um, you know, focused on um, something very narrow in terms of positioning. The area or the parameters should be broad enough 
for you to have uh, flexible positionings um, uh, by being able to address needs with which either are the same or are very similar. So this uh, newer example is um, the disposable lighters for the making inroads into the market of uh, safety matches. But what's going to happen? Um, some of the uh, consumers with, who are uh, stuck to with the matches or who are focused on matches may like to switch over to disposable lighters. And that is what is happening as a matter of fact. And uh, whenever you see that happened or whatever uh, or whenever that happens, that is an, ex an example of um, uh, trying to catch up with a newer technology. And that is when we start uh, discussing the um, implications of uh, going across categories. Now, stay focused on this very example which I gave you. And with the help of this example, I think you know, we can very easily conclude that brand extensions uh, define not only new markets, but they also define new segments and they define new categories. Although the brand extension basically is um, going from one category to another, but uh, at times there are certain you know, flexibilities and at times you know, there are certain uh, compromises. And for the sake of uh, the better understanding, um, let's not uh, be hooked on to the two very well differentiated concepts in terms of line extension and brand extension. This is an example of which uh, is on the margin and uh, the which um, that has its uh, the implications into the area of line extension and also into the area of brand extension in terms of defining uh, the new categories and within the categories defining new boundaries of the segments. Staying focused on the same example of uh, the matches versus uh, disposable lighters. Now, the consumers who uh, have switched over to lighters uh, are the consumers could form the same market of lights. And within the same the market of lights, you have consumers who use safety matches for uh, their household purposes. And there are consumers who use lights for the purposes of uh, lighting their cigarettes. Uh, our pipes, I mean, for the, our cigars for that matter. Now, there are two very distinct segments within the light uh, or the lights uh, the market. Uh, when you enter that particular market with new technology, which is going to necessitate a newer plant, a complete new uh, the mix of uh, variables, uh, I mean, not only uh, the variables of uh, the marketing mix, but a complete bag of variables uh, belonging to so many different functions you know, within the overall business. A new plant and uh, the new dynamics and new everything. But what you're doing is you are redefining that one particular segment within the category. And uh, in terms of production and operations, you are definitely into a category, into an area which is very different from uh, manufacturing uh, safety matches, but in terms of the, the market segments or the boundaries of those segments, it is defining those all over again. This is how uh, the brand extension uh, helps you define uh, different uh, segments and uh, different boundaries. And of course, when that happens, the result is you're pushing sales. And uh, when you're pushing sales, you are bringing more value to the brand and the brand is energizing itself and energizing itself in a way that it really wants to pay back to you in the marketplace um, in one way or the other by having another um, set of characteristics, uh, another set of character and another set of uh, the value framework. So these are some of the Actuating uh, the factors uh, the which uh, you people have uh, while making decisions um, regarding uh, the brand extensions versus new brands. Uh, this is not all. Uh, the one more um, uh, factor uh, which you may consider uh, while uh, going for uh, the brand extension is it's, it's a very, very important you know, factor and a very interesting one that it provides you access to the image capital 
you see the pool of image or the, uh, the, the collection of you know, positive images that you have or consumers could have in their uh, mind is what you may call image capital. It is capital because it is that capital with which is um, actuating customers to go back and back, back and back to your brand, uh, buying it uh, over and over again and generating uh, the value of the for your company. So you have access to the image capital which is going to uh, provide you with a beautiful you know, platform um, full of value to go for something, the chances of success of which lie on a very high pedestal in comparison with something stand alone. May I point out the discussion on um, companies spending so much or rather investing so much of money on uh, strong brands? Why are they running after uh, strong brands and acquire those? Why? Because they want to have very strong brands that can add value to the businesses. And one of the very prime reasons that they go and run after strong brands is because they know after they have invested um, is a hefty amount of money that on buying this particular brand, they can get into the brand extensions and they can get into so many different areas in which they specialize. And in which areas the company, which is the target of acquisition, may not uh, specialize. So the acquiring company they may have uh, the intention of uh, getting into brand extensions uh, even before they have started talking with the, uh, the target company, which is the target of that acquisition. So a company that are getting another company, which is uh, making razor blades, for example, uh, they may be the uh, subject of uh, that uh, target because the acquiring company they would like to get into a host of uh, the different items which may be uh, very close in terms of character to what that uh, razor blades company is doing um, but also uh, those uh, items or those things uh, to which you know that company is not very closely related but the uh, the company that is intending to buy that knows that it can get into those areas and hence add value uh, to that brand uh, by get it, getting into those new areas. So that explains to a large extent the why companies are willing to offer uh, hefty the prices for the strong brands, the prices you know, which are so many times over and above the existing the share value of that particular company because they know that uh, by getting into different other areas, they are going to recover those costs and uh, still uh, uh, come out as uh, the winners and uh, the add value to the overall operations, which is going to be a beefed up or a laddered up operation. Uh, this is not all. The awareness level uh, regarding certain brands is so high meaning the loyalty of certain brands is also so high that customers in the marketplace perceive those brands operating even into those categories where they're not present. The example of that is a jam manufacturer may have such a high level of awareness that the people or customers like you and I may think that they also are into the chutneys and the achar and those kinds of uh, other things. Well, if you think the, the categories uh, that are too closely related or the segments are too closely related, well, customers uh, they may also look upon them as a, as a company that is also into uh, canned uh, uh, foods, for example. And this does happen in the marketplace uh, very frequently. And uh, well, I shouldn't say very frequently, say every now and then. In that situation, you Think to yourself, why shouldn't we get into those categories where we are perceived to be present, but we are not? Because the recall value of the brand is so high, and whenever you carry out market research, or even when you are talking informally with uh, anyone you know, who could be a part of the target market, uh, you realize that people are talking about those products which you are not producing. 
So you start thinking, why shouldn't we get into those? So you get into those categories. When you get into those categories, what you're doing is that you are not only having an access to the image capital, you are also adding to the image capital which you already have. This is a very, very interesting phenomenon. And you must try to understand that. I have prepared for your the better understanding a graphical illustration which explains all this. But let me rephrase it. You, I mean, a strong brand uh, actuates you to have access to the image capital uh, while you are thinking whether you should go for an extension or you should go for a new brand. And inclination on your part is to go for the extension because of the image capital. But then there are situations where you do not even sell one particular item or one particular product. And people in the market think you also sell that because uh, they, they breathe the, your brand uh, you know, all the time. If not all the time, get most of the time. And the thing, this brand is present there also. So when you get into those categories, not only that you're, well, you are getting into those categories because the automatic, uh, there's an automatic pull uh, toward the image capital. But then at the same time, because of the power that you have, the loyalty that the brand has, you're also adding to the image capital uh, of the brand. Let us try to look at um, the illustration which I'm uh, trying to explain you know, with the help of words. The circle that you see uh, represents accumulated image capital. Uh, this is what uh, your brand has accumulated so far over the last couple of or maybe a few decades. And uh, you are going for uh, a new brand. I mean, you're, you're going for a new offering and uh, the natural inclination is to go for brand extension and you get kind of pulled toward this accumulated image capital which is that big circle. Now under situations in which you think that you should get into other categories or other markets where you are being perceived as already present or as already a player, uh, when you go there you add to that capital and look at the circle underneath and uh, this part of the illustration uh, on the right hand side is yet another brand which is into a different category and with the help of this brand uh, I mean with actual presence and existence in that category what you're doing is you're adding to the accumulated capital that you had earlier and now with the outer circle if you take a look at these concentric circles uh, the outer circle is the added or the reinforced image capital of the company. The circle, the overall circle is not bigger. So not only brand extension uh, enables you to have access to the image capital, it also helps you to reinforce that further. And that is uh, one of the beauties of uh, brand extension. It is um, not only uh, these factors that uh, I have uh, talked about so far, I think I've talked about six factors which uh, motivate you to get into extensions. Uh, there is yet another one. And that is, again, related to um, the one we discussed in relation to line extensions. But I am very sure that you are trying to understand these subtleties of uh, the differences uh, between uh, the dynamics of line extensions and the dynamics of brand extensions. Brand extension is essential for survival. It is absolutely essential to break away from the mono product. And uh, the, the mono product is the one which has been there for a lot of time, I mean for a long time, and uh, it is subject to a certain life cycle like uh, every product is. Uh, this is uh, a factor of which uh, was talked about uh, during uh, one of the previous uh, lectures but uh, I really now want to uh, talk about this one in uh, the absolute clarity in relation to brand extensions. It is absolutely essential to break away from the mono product uh, because it is a question of survival. 
what is going to happen when uh, the uh, the mono product is going to be at the end of the life cycle like all other living beings uh, the brands also are um, products and brands also are you know subject to um, a life cycle which you very well know so in order to make sure or in order to circumvent to avoid the the, the negative side of uh, the reality of uh, the life cycle, you get into another category for compensation. Because in that category uh, in which you have just entered, you are starting with a new product and uh, the brand name happens to be the same. So in a way you see it's a new brand or it's a new product with the same brand name. And uh, you are uh, starting off uh, from uh, the basic preliminary stage of that brand's life. And you still have a lot many years to go. But before that also uh, comes to the maturity stage and then the decline stage. And uh, you, know, you know the curve uh, where the product starts and then you see it reaches maturity and then it starts declining. So you get into another category uh, which really offers you an opportunity to start a new life in the, uh, in the company's uh, life of uh, marketing, in the company's life of production, in the company's life of business. And uh, it is not that uh, you are wanting to get into another category uh, because uh, it only is the factor of uh, product life cycle. It basically is the factor of your vision because you know that the growth gap is going to be filled by extending the brand somewhere down the line and you have reached that line, that point on that line now. And you are getting ready to start introducing the brand and it is the brand extension that enables you to get to that point very comfortably. Uh, to get to that jumping board and, and, and a well padded jumping board from which you know you can jump onto the other category and um, start doing something all over again uh, with the help of your knowledge uh, by trying to plug the growth gap and uh, nothing could provide you uh, with an opportunity to be better than brand extension. So, so much uh, for um, the, the brand um, extension. Uh, the conclusion that uh, we can uh, draw from the uh, learning that we've had so far, uh, I would like to talk about that in the form of a very brief recap in the next lecture. I would look forward to seeing you then. Allah Hafiz.